John Archer. My name's John Archer. I'm the same age as Jonathan Ross, which is 50. Sorry, Jonathan. Uh, I'm a comedy magician. Got my happy shirt on, got a microphone, got a load of empty seats. It's like all the gigs I do. Uh, not from dead, are they? And I suppose it is a bit of a strange thing, but I was a policeman for 10 years up in the northeast of England, stopping on tees, Cleveland Constabulary. So I've probably been doing magic, uh, either as a hobby or professionally, for about 25 years. There can't be many jobs where the whole point of your job is just to make people feel good. Um, there are a few jobs, but maybe we shouldn't mention them. Is this the way to The main thing I want my audience to think is, he's a nice guy, we had a good time, we love him. Let's all welcome our next contender, I think you're going to love him, Mr John Archer. <laughs> Good to see you all. It's good to be here. My name is, as you know, it's John Archer. I'm a comedy magician. Uh, I tell you that all nice and early because you're all looking at me at the moment thinking he looks more like a builder. <laughs> well, I must admit, I am laying a few bricks at the moment. Um, <laughs> but people often ask me, can magicians use their skills to their own advantage? And of course, the answer is yes. I'm going to try and demonstrate that with a simple little trick. It's a simple little trick, ladies and gentlemen, using five envelopes. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the envelopes before we start. Uh, four of the envelopes are worthless. They contain nothing apart from a John Archer commemorative zero-dollar bill <laughs> printed on my own computer when it was low on ink. They are not very nice. <laughs> However, one of the envelopes contains 100 pounds. <laughs> exactly. Now, a lot of people are doing more impressive tricks than this. This is a one in five. People are doing amazing tricks here tonight. This is just a one in five. But I'm the only act who is wagering his life savings. <laughs> I'm going to start with this gentleman here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, about the envelopes, sir. What's your name? Tarek. Tarek? Yeah. Wonderful. Tarek, I'm going to tell you about the envelopes. Now, they've all got something written on them. That helps me play the little game. It sort of helps me mess with your head. You see, the first envelope has got something written on it. Now, this is the only envelope that's got something written on it, even though all of the other envelopes do have something written on them. But it's not something, it's something else, even though it's not something else. <laughs> OK, don't try and work it out. The question you've got to ask yourself, Tarek, is would I put the money in the envelope that says it's got something in it? When we know for a fact that all envelopes have something in them, even the ones that don't have the something you want. <laughs> You're thinking too much. If you don't go for envelope number one, Tarek, you might go for envelope number two. Envelope number two says nothing, even though it says something, but as I promised, it's not something else. <laughs> the question you've got to ask yourself is would I put the money in the envelope that says it's got nothing in it? That seems a little bit too obvious, but maybe it's a double-double bluff. No. These aren't really questions I'm, I'm looking for answers for, but thanks, <laughs> thanks anyway, Tarek. No when I read the script, I can't remember seeing your name so often. <laughs> but thanks anyway. <laughs> Tarek, if you don't go for envelope number two, which has nothing on it, you might go for envelope number three, which says yours. Now, everybody likes what is rightfully theirs, but this isn't theirs, it's yours. <laughs> the question is, would I put the money in the envelope that says it's yours? But of course, you read it, you think it's mine, but it's not mine, it's yours, it says on the front. Now, if you don't go for envelope number three that says yours, you might go for envelope number four, which says mine, and you will notice that mine is much bigger than yours. <laughs> Get over it, it's genetics. The question is, <laughs> would I put the money in the envelope that says it's mine, when obviously that would be the obvious place to put it, because you might read it and think it's yours, but it's not yours, because the other one was yours, so this must be mine. Maybe that's where the money is. Tarek, if you don't go for envelope number four, you might go for the last envelope, Envelope number five. Envelope number five says sex. The question is, would I put the money in the envelope that says sex? <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'm gambling that you're not the type of man who would ask for sex in an open public forum. <laughs> Tarek, do me a favour, stand up. Wonderful. Tarek, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you just to name one of the envelopes. Whichever envelope you name, that is the envelope you get. One, two, three. Sex. You want sex? <laughs> Such a shame. So many girls yet to choose an envelope. <laughs> Tarek, take sex. Tarek, open up the envelope. Inside you will find a John Archer commemorative zero dollar bill, is that correct? Okay. Hold it up, let me have a look. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, Tarek, you can have a seat. Hi, this gentleman here, what's your name, sir? Hanny. Hanny? Yes. Wonderful, Hanny, you're the same thing for you, I don't have to explain the envelopes. We've got, we've got something, we've got uh, nothing, we've got yours and mine. I'll count to three, you choose one of the envelopes. One, two, three. Nothing. You want nothing? You sure? Sure. In which case, you will get nothing. Take nothing. Thank you. Open it up. Honey, inside you will find a John Arch commemorative zero dollar bill, is that correct? Yep. Hold it up, let me have a look. Yes! You can have a seat. Thank you very much. This lady here, hi, what's your name? Zara. Zara, wonderful. Zara, unfortunately sex is gone. 
not necessarily for you, but for me, but there are three, <laughs> three envelopes left. We've got, uh, we've got something, yours or mine. I'll count to three. You're too keen. Shame sex is gone. One, <laughs> two, three. Yours. You want yours? Okay, Please. take yours. Wonderful. Open it up. Have a look inside. Inside you will find a John Arch commemorative zero dollar bill. Is that correct? Yeah. There it is. Give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. You can have a seat. Leaves me with two envelopes. Um, let me see. This gentleman here, you look keen. Stand up, sir. You've got a choice now between something and mine. Again, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to name one. But would you be surprised if I already knew the choice you were going to make? Have you made your mind up? Yes. Would I be correct in saying that you are going to choose something? Yes. You see how easy this is? <laughs> Even though I give you the choice, I can still tell you which one you're going to choose. But I'm going to give you the chance to do something that nobody else could do. I'm going to give you the chance, if you wanted to, to change your mind. Do you want to do that? No. You don't? It's a shame. It would have helped. Take the envelope. <laughs> Open it up. Inside you'll find a John Arch commemorative zero dollar bill. Is that correct? Sure. Nothing else in the envelope. Hold it on show everybody. <laughs> Give a big round of applause. Here it is. Which leaves me, ladies and gentlemen, with mine. You see, you could all have had what's mine, but oh no, you wanted something. Or sex. <laughs> but if you just been brave enough to ask for what was mine, you would have got it, ladies and gentlemen. The one envelope containing £100. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, work that out. <laughs> no, no, they don't believe me, but inside the envelope, ladies and gentlemen, there is indeed 20, 40, 60, 80, £100. I saw the guys there. Tell her, look, genuinely mystified. Is this an illusion they might be aware of, or is it a totally new thing, or well, partially new thing? Uh, uh, no, I, I, I came up with it. So whether they've seen somebody else do my trick, uh, or my method, um, is possible. But um, or whether they've worked it out, because you know they're, they're clever men. Have you ever performed in Vegas? Uh, no. I've got a good feeling about this. I've got a pretty good feeling. <laughs> right, because they're... Look, they're looking at the envelopes. Oh my word. Yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> but they can look at the envelopes, can't they? You're not worried about that. No, I'm not too worried. Yeah, yeah. They can do what the heck they like, can't they? <laughs> Let me just ask you, I don't know that. Have you ever pulled that way, the whole sex line? Do you no, ever get any number? Look at me. Look at me. I've never pulled anywhere. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, 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 I've just pulled. pulled. I've just pulled. Oh. <laughs> You see, but this is a good sign. This is a good sign because they're still talking about it and they're still looking at the envelope. We should have a clock. We should have a little clock. We should time okay. them out. OK, guys, I'm going to cut this short because I think we've given them long enough, don't you? Yeah. Mr Penn, <laughs> Mr Teller, have you got it? You look a little bit confounded. <laughs> wow! It's a funny routine. It's just silly. It's not really supposed to fool us. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the goddamn envelopes! <laughs> Yeah. He won't. He will not go down without a fight. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that he must have been holding the hundred? Is it pounds you call it here? Yes, the hundred pounds. It pounds. <laughs> All the time among the envelopes. It was a little bit fishy the way he held the envelopes, but not much. Not much. Really, not, not much, much fishy. Enough to fool you for I'm a while. Kind of, I'm kind of. Never mind. Don't give it to me though, because I'm not going to let you get away with just saying okay, we I'm think gonna it's go, this. Okay, I'm going to go a little further. We, we need, I want specifically you to you, say the method. I'll or tell else. you. I'll tell you that um, we think you had a matching orange envelope that could fit in here that had the f hundred pounds in it that you were manipulating the whole time and was there all the time waited that they were all done and then did a slide in like this and open it up and pulled it back out that's all we've got because you if you I can if you honestly, did fool I us you did say, fool us i don't slide anything inside to any of the envelopes <laughs> The most important thing about this is we are supposed to feel amazed and we're supposed to feel like we didn't know how it was done. And the truth of the matter is we feel amazed and we really do not know how it's done. Well, let me hear you, let me hear you say those words. Let me hear you say, he fooled us. Well, well I think in my heart, Spit it out. he fooled us. Yeah! John, you're going to break us. Well done, man.
Congratulations. Thank you very much. John Thank Arthur you. from Stockton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You've got a baby, mate. Good luck.